Hello everyone. Today I'll be tackling a topic which I often believe gets disregarded when talking about the growth of a community in a particular speed game, which is its leaderboards. Sure, controversial rule changes and newly added categories often get discussed, but what I truly see a lacking discussion on is the aesthetic and structure of a leaderboard. You can honestly say this is a good thing, as it's never nice to shame a community for having quote, an ugly looking leaderboard website. However, I'm hoping this video will give constructive advice of which you might want to apply within your own community's leaderboards. Before we can talk about the current meta of speed on leaderboards, we must first touch base on the past and how it's grown to today's standards. As most people know, speedrunning started back in the late 90s, with games such as Doom, Quake and GoldenEye being some examples of early prominence in the scene. With the internet still being in its early years, there wasn't a concise way to moderate and track the legitimacy of times. Often people would submit VHS tapes to gaming magazines for competitions, with the objective being to complete a level of a game as fast as possible. This would then inspire people who enjoyed doing the hobby to create forums and websites to keep track of times, and see how people rank up against each other. Some of these websites include Doom and Quake demo sites, The Elite.net, and of course Mario Kart 64.com. In 2004, a new groundbreaking website would become the prestige plateau of all speedrun content to be viewed on, known as Speed Demos Archive, formerly known as the Demos Archive for Quake playthroughs. The reason why I gave SDA the description of being the prestige plateau of speedrunning is due to its immense high standards for verification. A submission would undergo a very intense analysis by a body and group of people to verify the run's legitimacy and also if the video quality and the website rule sets were being followed. The strong benefits would be that if a viewer stumbles across the run they liked, then it would be filled with countless information to learn about whilst watching alongside with, which could entice a viewer to get more involved in the community. However, this website is more or less a showcase of the very best in speedrunning and was not necessarily known for keeping a track record of all runners in a ranking format, which I believe led to its downfall. With the community growing in size, many groups of people were not fond of some of SDA's ruling regarding timing methods and glitches, which led up to the next chapter where communities would create their own websites in Google Docs to keep track of rank within their own community. Personally, this chapter in history is my favourite due to how much personality shined during this era with communities designing their sites to be tailored around the community's desires. Don't get me wrong, speedrun.com does provide a lot of similar tools to do this. However, nothing captures the aesthetic or tone of a game quite like a custom-built website can. My personal all-time favourite speedrun website has to go to haloruns.com, which is still used today. I believe the downfall of this method of speedrun data keeping was the amount of work and money people would have to invest coding and upkeeping the website. Also, controversy could arise based on the moderation of a community, which is where I believe speedrun.com's method works best. Having a body of moderators who can oversee a community's behaviour almost created a democracy within its communities, allowing members to be more involved with the decision making of changes to a community's page. In March of 2014, speedrun enthusiasts known as PAC launched speedrun.com, a place for all games to be welcomed and tracked under one location. This website was a massive step forward for unifying the scene together and creating a simple way for communities to launch leaderboard pages under a more unified design and structure. This made navigating different community pages a lot easier, as all websites were mostly structured the same way. However, I do believe this came at a cost, losing some of the personality of the community. As the years have gone by, the website has evolved providing more options for moderation teams to help tweak their pages based around community needs, as well giving members more options to customise the design of their own pages and improving general back of house issues within the site. With well over 17,000 games and 13.5 million monthly visitors on the site, I believe it will benefit the community by having a guide video like this, which will help moderators better understand how to improve the structure and overall look of their site. I'll keep examples of poorly structured sites off the video, as I don't want this to feel like a personal attack on any communities at all. However, I will replicate the faults I notice on particular pages and show ways of condensing and simplifying information on the page. The first parts we need to go over is the basics. It is very important to have the title of your speed game correct. Now it should sound like a no-brainer, but even the misuse of capitals and colons can make the smallest differences. Secondly, you need to try and think of an acronym or a short name for your leaderboard's URL link. If not done, the website will by default create a very long and unmemorable URL, utilising underscores for spacing. I recommend something with between the three to six letters. The mock speed game I have made up is Monsters Inc. N64, so I will call my link MI64. After this, remember to link your game to the correct Twitch game page and add a community Discord invite link. This makes it very easy for members to join your community and learn the game whilst interacting easier. Following that, be sure to add a decent resolution cover image, preferably one that does not have advertisements littered all over the cover. I'll touch back on some of these settings, but for now, continue to add the regions and consoles the games can be played on. After completing the basic credentials, it's time to move on to categories. 
We'll start by adding in your mainline and miscellaneous categories from your speed game. As an example, any percent, 100 percent, all levels, glitchless, etc. I did add a miscellaneous category just to show you how to make one. Of course, after making your categories, be sure to add in your category rules, since often categories will vary in their rule set and it's important to let new runners be aware of them. Also above, you may notice a main rules tab that will show across all categories, so look at this as your game rules. Some examples may be what emulators are allowed and the requirements to have your runs verified. Below your full game categories is your individual level categories. Isle speedruns can be very popular and a good incentive to endorse community members to practice or push the segments of games further down. Start by adding all the levels in the game, excluding auto-scrollers, as there is no real way to approve a pod the speed of them. After adding in all your levels, you need to make categories for the individual levels. The most common example is any percent, 100 percent, and glitchless. Of course this varies depending on the game. Once all your categories are made, feel free to add whoever you need to your moderation team. They are required however to verify their email. Also be aware, once you make someone a super mod, you cannot remove this role, unless done by a website moderator. On the tags page, feel free to fill out the credentials. This helps with filter searching on the site and making your page more accessible. Now this is where we get to the juicy and most useful asset of the site, variables. Variables allow you to filter and condense information with your own custom credentials. Examples can be having two varieties of the same category, example one with a particular glitch and one without. Another great example is console or hardware variances, such as N64 to VC or SSD to HDD. This is where I find my biggest issues are with people's sites. Often or not, you will see 10 full game categories which could be very easily condensed in half with the use of this asset. I'm going to showcase an example of a page which has variable consoles and variable categories for two different full game categories. First we'll start by making the console variable for the page. Since this variable needs to be shown on all category tabs, the process is very simple. Start by naming a variable. The reason it's important to name this correctly is that it will show on the submission page for runners. Once that is done, start by adding in your consoles. I'm going to use the traditional N64 game route for this example. You might also have noticed I added the IQ console, which is known for being quite rare and arbitrary in most speed games, so I'll add this console as a miscellaneous console. That way it can still be found on the page, but it is not shown front and center. After typing out each console, hit the triple dotted button in the top right corner, and hit the edit variable, which will take you to a pop-up. As you can see, you have a drop down options to assign this variable to a specific category, but since we want this to be shown on every category, we will leave this as its default, all categories. Make sure to tick use as a subcategory if you wish to have the same result as me. If you do not tick this option, all runs will still be merged as one. However, we'll show what console or variable the player is using to the right of their time on the page. A good example is ESS adapters for Zelda games, which I believe are not currently shown on the page. After confirming your variable changes, hit the triple dotted button again and select the bottom option, assign all runs to default value. If you remember before when adding the variable options, in it had a default box option to the right. Make sure the most popular console is ticked as default. Whenever a user clicks on your page, it will by default show whatever console was chosen and all runs will be assigned to it. If you do not do this step, every run on the page will be hidden and not visible. Do not panic however, your runs are still on the page but are not assigned to a variable, so they are showing as hidden by default. A good way to merge runs and break them apart into their respective consoles will be shown on screen. I start by opening all runs from the Wii VC category page and opening them on new tabs. After which I change the URLs on all the tabs to edit run, which will take me to the submission page. After adding in all my filters and assigning by default, I will refresh the tabs and assign these runs to their respective console. I understand this method is very tedious, but hopefully it is one of the most efficient methods to merge runs into the variables. Hopefully SRC staff see this video or hear your criticisms and implement a feature to make this whole step easier. I'm now going to show you how to make variables which will only show on specific categories. For this example, I'll make two entirely different variables, with one allocating to any percent and one to 100 percent. The first variable I'll call BLJ and no BLJ, since you know, Mike Wazowski can BLJ in my imaginary speed game. For the second variable, I'll call this MSE and no MSE. You may be asking what MSE stands for. Mike's sexual energy, of course. A speedrun glitch which increases the size of Mike Wazowski's, you know, hurt box. Anyways, after following the steps on screen, you'll see that we now have a page which has variable 1 only for any percent, and variable 2 showing only on 100%. The same merging method we showcase for consoles can be applied with merging runs to specific category variables too. The next part of this video is very subjective, and the advice I give may not work for what you're going for on your page, so experiment and see what works best for you. I commonly find pages which have very bright and glaring imagery behind their boards, which can make it very hard to read the information. Remember guys, bright colours on bright text never equals a good result. 
For this next step, I'll be doing this on Photoshop, so just follow along if you have the software. Start by finding yourself a relatively large image like a wallpaper. I advise to go for something scenic which relates to the series or game. For my fake page, I'll use the Monsters Incorporated building. Once the image is in Photoshop, go to your filter options and add brightness and contrast. A pop-up menu will show up adding the filter. Start by dragging both your brightness and contrast down. Don't overdo it as we have a step to help further drop the glare later on. Afterwards, add a curve filter and pinch one third from the bottom of the line and create a slight curve to the right. Next we will add a solid colour and change it to dark grey. After that, drop the opacity to around 35-30%. to 30%. If you wish to add more flair to your image, that is fine, but for now I just want to show you how to make a subtle background image. After adding the background image in, you can see the transformation from before to after and see that the information on the board is much easier to read and it helps allure your eyes to focus on the main bit of information. Now that the image has been made and added, we will now create a coloured theme based around the background and game colour palettes. Before getting to record this part of the video, I was contacted by SRC moderators about my fake page, and it was sadly removed. I do completely understand, however. To the moderators, I apologise. However, I found a game I moderate which does not have a theme made for it, so I thought I'd go back over the page and recreate the imagery method I used before. Now that that's out of the way, we'll start by clicking either Add Theme or Edit Theme on the left sidebar on your page. I do the order of the steps a little weird here, but start by adding your background in first and saving it. This will make creating the colour palette easier to reference. Once you've returned back to the edit theme page, start by adjusting your primary colour either to the main colour of the background or the main colour of the brand of your game. For this example, I decided to use blue, referencing the sky's background. Feel free to adjust this to your own style, however I do find this particular colour code for the panel colours to look quite nice, since it's a bit darker and blends with the image better. Next I like to adjust the opacity to 80%, allowing the imagery behind to still flow with the boards, but since we did the Photoshop adjustments earlier, they shouldn't conflict with the text. This next setting is very important for how your board will look. One of the new additions to this settings page, you now have the ability to make your top nav bar the same as your primary colour or your panel colour. I personally love this new feature, but traditionally tend to use the panel colour, as it's less jarring and flows with the background image better. If you are using a background image, feel free to ignore this next step, however I wanted to provide a good colour code for a background without an image. Once all steps are complete, hit save to have a look at your progress and see if any adjustments need to be made. The next few options I did not bother to record examples of, but I will showcase how each feature can be used on screen with other communities' leaderboards. Banners is another new addition to this menu, allowing you to add imagery above the boards similar to a Twitter banner. Most people do not like this feature, as it does not follow a structured resolution or workaround. The reason is that people have their monitor resolution and zoom in settings different, so the method used is the way to make it universal. If adjustments are made to this feature, I could see this being used more than backgrounds in the future. But personally, I believe we need something similar to how Twitter or YouTube banners work to make this look reformed and easier for artists to make their imagery work and flow on screen. The SRC team have allowed you to add your own community's personality to their logo. Essentially, the hyperlink image in the top left can be changed to your own particular design, but must follow the rules of having speedrun.com in the imagery. I honestly do not know how this feature is implemented in full, however you can add a small favicon logo of your series or game which shows up next to the games you moderate on your own personal profile. Now trophies are really cool, I encourage people to get creative and try your best to implement a system if possible. An easy example is to find a common logo or image used in a game and create the colour palette gold, silver and bronze for your first, second and third placings. Below background image settings there are advanced settings which allow you to make scrolling imagery and other cool things, but for this video I will not be touching on that. I'm going to quickly explain category extensions and why you should be using this feature. Commonly a category might get requested to be added by community members, but it may feel too miscellaneous to make a main game category, and also, your miscellaneous categories might already be really full, so a good workaround is to create a new page purely dedicated to these arbitrary categories. If the page is made, I would recommend you to use the same URL but add CE at the end. As well, be sure the title of the game the same but add category extensions to the end. Now if a community already had a CE page before this feature existed and had a big enough player base, an automated edition of this feature could have been done by default. However, if you're working with a page that does not already show this option on your sidebar, then I will cover off quickly how to add it in. First you start by hitting edit game option. Next, scroll down till you find game types. Next you will see a hyperlink saying this thread. Click on the blue text and you will be directed to a forum page where you can submit your game and category extensions page and request them to be linked together. For my example, I use Kingdom Hearts 1, 2 and 3. Once complete, you will see the category extensions link on the side. If you are unsure your alternative page is a category extension, hover your mouse over each of the question marks to help better define what your alternative page is. 
For the last point in this video, I quickly wanted to recap over the features on the side and show you how these can be utilized. For guides, feel free to add your notes regarding strategies, tricks and routes, as well as video guides which you can hyperlink in the body of your text. Commonly people use this to show community members how to set the game up correctly. Some examples are older PC games or emulators. Be sure not to add your split files or program files here as that is what resources is for. As you can see on screen, people like to add their splits, external software links, and sometimes the live split and OBS links. Last is your forum page. This is where a big majority of your community discussion will be had, so be sure to have all your important forum discussions sticky to the top so they are easy to find. And that's it! A lot of these steps can be ignored or done different, based on how your page works, but just wanted to give some basic input into how every feature works and how it can benefit your page. I believe branding and visuals are very important in selling your speed game to the masses. It'll make your game stand out and give it some style that will make your haven for the community a cool place to come on a regular basis. If this advice was helpful, and you would like to see me do more videos like this, please let me know, as I've been lingering on the idea of doing a live split layout or stream layout video, but worry will come off far too subjective. Please give me feedback on this if it's a good idea or not. As well, feel free to like and subscribe as it helps me grow and reach out to newer audiences. Until next time, I'm Sayans, and thanks for watching.